Hey, Owen, this is Rick from Ohio. So I was wondering what your stance on Project 2025 is, like how much of a threat you think that it actually is. I've been talking to friends on both sides of the political spectrum, and it seems like an absolute back and forth. Some of them believe it's a threat. Some of them don't. Some of them didn't even know it existed. Be interested to hear your opinion. Thanks. Bye. I understand that it's a far-right extremist nutcase plan put out by, I think, was it the Heritage? Yeah, the Heritage Foundation released it, which is a far-right think tank. Now, how bad do I think it's going to get? Do I think we should be worried about it? There's something called the Overton Window. Overton Window is kind of a window of acceptable public discourse. So communism is not really something that people talk about in the United States seriously. They don't take it seriously. There are no real big communist groups in the U.S. that have any representation. I'm trying to think of something on the right that doesn't have representation. There's no eugenics movement on the right that has any real representation. You know, a, a movement that strives to, like, execute the, the elderly or the... Um, disabled or something as a kindness, quote unquote. There's no movement for that on the right. So the Overton window is focused right here in this little narrow area of acceptable public discourse. And the Overton window, every time somebody releases something insane like this, it, it moves the Overton window further to the right. Most of this stuff has a very low chance of getting through. Like a lot of these policies probably won't make it through. Some of them Probably will, some, but the most disturbing part about Project 2025 is the fact that this stuff is being espoused in the first place. The disturbing part is watching the country move into a more fascist, extremist direction. I think there's some real psychotic stuff on this. When I say that, I'm not being hyperbolic. I mean, Project 2025 talks about, like, getting rid of trans people, finding a way to get rid of trans people. Here, sexual orientation and gender identity rights. Project 2025 proposes the government should recognize only heterosexual men and women, rescind anti-discrimination protections for LGBTQ individuals, and eliminate diversity, equity, and inclusion provisions from federal legislation. When discussing the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, uh, Severino, I guess the guy that wrote it, called for rescinding regulations prohibiting discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation, gender identity, transgender status, sex characteristics, etc. So there you go. They want to roll back protections for minority groups. That's li I'm not joking when I say it's the exact plan that Hitler followed. Somebody is seriously sitting there reading a World War II book. I don't know who it is. Is it this guy Severino? Is he the one that's doing it? Is he the one that wrote this? Whoever wrote this is reading World War II books because it's exact. Even down to like outlawing adult entertainment, I guess you could say, adult entertainment. Once again, something that Germany did in World War II, before World War II. Adult entertainment, I'm going to switch it out for that, manifested today in the omnipresent propagation of trans ideology and sexualization of children, Complete fabrication. For instance, is not a political Gordian knot inextricably binding up disparate claims about free speech, property rights, sexual liberation, and child welfare? Wow. Why did you have to make that such a ridiculously complicated sentence? Why can't you just use English? God, that is like a run-on sentence. How long is a sentence? I guess technically it's not a run-on sentence, but it's got like 30 words in it. It has no claim to First Amendment protection, a gender identity, um, you know, being trans, being gay or whatever, or being a woman, I, I think, has no claim to First Amendment protection. Wow, dude. Isn't that crazy? Rolling back our free speech rights. I told you this is straight from World War II. No joke. Its purveyors are child predators and misogynistic exploiters of women. Their product is as addictive as any illicit drug and as psychologically destructive as any crime. Adult entertainment should be outlawed. The people who produce and distribute it should be imprisoned. Educators and public librarians who purvey it should be classed as registered sex offenders. And telecommunications and technology firms that facilitate its spread should be shuttered.
Uh, let me find some other stuff here. Again, none of this stuff is going to get through. Almost none of it, probably. But they'll maybe get halfway to some of it. Like, for example, they're not going to manage to outlaw adult entertainment, but they might make it so that you're legally required to provide ID or something to get it or to access websites or something like that. They'll get halfway. Politics is the art of meeting in the middle. You have no choice but to meet in the middle. Or there's just 100% complete gridlock. And if you don't make a deal on this right now, then the next guy who takes your seat is going to make a deal on it. So the point is, every time they come out with something psychotic like this, you have to meet in the middle somewhere on it. Quick interjection, this won't take long, I promise. I'd appreciate it if you watched to the end of the video, or at least a couple extra seconds, because YouTube bases its algorithm off of watch time. The more watch time a video has, the further the video will go. Also, take a look at my website, owamorgan.com. I'm selling my book, Understanding Jehovah's Witnesses, 400 pages, and my second book, 100 Questions for Jehovah's Witnesses, which is about 80 pages. And you can find them both there on the website. Audio form, ebook form, whatever. It's about my experiences within the religion, and the history of the religion generally. The 100 questions are intended to challenge a religious leader, so I'd appreciate it if you give it a read. Okay, back to the video. Christian nationalism. As the leader of the Center for Renewing America, Russell Vaught has spearheaded an effort to instill precepts of Christian nationalism into government and public life should Trump win a second term. In a 2021 opinion piece, Vaught wrote Christian nationalism recognizes America as a Christian nation, but makes a commitment to an institutional separation between church and state, but not separation of Christianity from its influence on government and society. So government can't get involved in the church at all, ever, but the church can get involved in government. The church can sway policy in government. Why not have their cake and eat it too, basically. I have looked into this really heavily recently, and um, nationalism is a really odd word, right? Like, what does it mean? It's really hard to define exactly, but it's usually paired with another word. Blank nationalist. White nationalist, Christian nationalist, uh, national socialist, you know, that kind of thing. Nationalism, whatever it's paired with, is the idea that you want to unify the country under that umbrella. You know, you've got a white nationalist society. It means you want to unify the country completely and tie their identity to being white. And if they're not white, then they're not part of the country. And it's the idea that your country has the sole right to rule and no other country has any claim to authority to any degree. That's nationalism in a nutshell. So just plain nationalism is being patriotic to an extreme degree and believing no other country has any right to rule and tying your identity to that thing. You know, there are German nationalists. There are United States nationalists, and they believe that, you know, the United States is uh, exceptional in every single way. And Germany and China and Japan, they don't have any claim to authority, any right to rule and it's a blight on society that there's even a government in those places that isn't controlled by the United States. That's the idea. Christian nationalism is a belief system where Christians are the unifying factor behind all of this. Everybody is a Christian, a specific brand of Christian, their brand of Christian. Evangelical extremist, you know, new apostolic reformation type of people like Kenneth Copeland's version of Christianity. That's what these people are aiming for with Christian nationalism. The National Socialist Party, which was eventually abbreviated to Nazi National Socialist because of the word socialist is ZI, starts with ZI in German. Anyway, National Socialists, that party was kind of taken over by Hitler. He, he picked that one specifically because he could use the... Now, socialist has a different meaning today than it did back then. Back then it meant you want to expand social programs and help the poor and improve the working man's condition and build social programs like social security and unemployment benefits and things like that. That's what socialist meant in Germany at the time. But 
National Socialists was a far right conservative belief system that stood for the working man, basically. And Hitler used that as an uh, as a means to spread nationalist and populist propaganda about how the elites are evil, the, the, the rich bankers are evil and they're taking everything from you, and those rich bankers are the Jews. Now, all we have to do is take over Germany in our name, in the name of social programs, in, in the name of uh, national socialists, which eventually became, you know, in the name of Nazis or in the name of Hitler, take it over so that the Jews can't control it anymore. That's the idea. Just kind of drawing out the parallel. Christian nationalism is like that, except instead of running on social programs, they're running on Christianity. The White Hats tainted the elite's adrenochrome supply with the coronavirus, and that's why so many members of the elites are getting the coronavirus, if indeed they do have their coronavirus. Um, so adrenochrome is a drug that the elites love. It comes f from children. Quick interjection. This won't take long, I promise. I just want to say I'd appreciate it if you check my Patreon. OwenMorgan.com slash Patreon to find it. YouTube's algorithm goes up and down, so I can never predict where it's going to be. Having patrons gives me some level of stability. Okay, back to the video. This is Michael Flynn at the Reawaken America Tour explaining his beliefs pretty succinctly, and you can see the Christian nationalism mixed in. And, he's and they're talking about the United States of America, talking about the United States of America, because when Matthew mentioned it in the Bible... Did Matthew mention the U.S.? He wasn't talking about the physical ground that he was on. He was talking about something in the distance. So if we are going to have one nation under God, which we must, we have to have one religion, one one. One nation under God and one religion under God, right? All of us together, working together. I don't That's Christian nationalism, what he's describing there. It's a full-fledged belief system that's fully formed out and has thought leaders in the movement and everything. They have plans to build all of this and everything. And I, I'm not even joking. I'm not being hyperbolic. I'm dead serious. Somebody... Is, like, I know all the thought leaders in the Christian nationalist movement. Like, I cover them every day. You know, you've got John Lindell of the New Apostolic Reformation and uh, Bill Johnson. They're extremely influential. Let's see, Hank Kuhneman, very influential, and Kenneth Copeland, he's up there. Uh, all of these people are extremely well known for building the Christian nationalist framework out. But I don't know which one is sitting there reading World War II books. Somebody is. Because this is following the exact timeline to a T for how the evangelical German nationalist church acted, you know, leading up to World War II. I'm not even joking. Anyway, let's keep reading this section on Christian nationalism. In a 2021 opinion piece, Vaught wrote, Christian nationalism recognizes America as a Christian nation, but makes a commitment to an institutional separation between church and state, but not to the separation of Christianity from its influence on government and society. Notice that separation between church and state, but Christianity, not religion, but Christianity, can influence government. Politico reported in February 2024 that Vaught has embraced the idea that Christians are under assault, and he sought to use his regular contacts with Trump to elevate Christian nationalism as a focal point in a second administration. Vaught has close ties with another former Trump administration official, Christian nationalist William Wolfe, with whom he said he was proud to work on scoping out a sound Christian nationalism. Actually, I have some videos from William Wolfe, but we're not going to hit him now. Wolfe said at an October 2023 Jesus and Politics conference that he thought we're getting close to needing to heed the call to arms in defense of Christianity as the art of war becomes a part of our religion. The online manifesto document found by the Beacon identifies Wolf as an editor titled The Statement of Christian Nationalism and the Gospel, and which seeks to implement a scripture-based system of government whereby Christ-ordained civil magistrates exercise authority over the American public. That is Christian nationalism, if you were wondering. Psychotic. That's Project 2025. Again, 
they're going to get some of it through. There's going to be a little bit in the middle. Like someone's going to meet in the middle on this stuff. That's disturbing in its own right. I don't even want to be halfway to that stuff. Okay, before reading about the economy, let me just say Sam Brownback, I think was his name. He was the governor of Kansas back in 2012, and he ran, I think, what was called the Kansas Experiment, where he implemented fully Republicans' tax plans and economic plans, fully implemented. It was a test to see on a large scale how it would work. Would it make things better or not? The answer is not. It destroyed Kansas's economy. So right out the gate, he implemented trickle-down economics. It's fabricated, nonsensical garbage. It's a way to justify the rich being richer. That's what trickle-down economics is. It doesn't trickle down. It trickles up. Anyway, let's see with that in mind what their economic plan is for Project 2025. The project provides a range of options for economic reform, which vary in their degree of radicalism. It's critical of the Federal Reserve, okay, assigning the institution blame for the business cycle and advocates for free banking and or commodity-backed currency, such as a gold standard. Okay, that's interesting, but I think that's really stupid. The American, the U.S. dollar is strong enough on its own right now that other currencies are based on the U.S. dollar. It is the world's reserve currency right now. We don't need to go to a gold standard. That would be bad. I think going to a gold standard is something that a country does when inflation is completely out of control and they don't know what to do and they need to link it to the rest of the world. Like inflation happens when a country is getting poorer, like they have less um, wealth to go around effectively and they have to give more dollars to basically give the same amount of money that they had to yesterday. So in Germany, it was famously like the worst example of hyperinflation in human history, to my knowledge. And gold marks were worth like 200 gold marks to the US dollar or something like that. And within a few days or a few weeks or a few months, it was like in the billions and the trillions of gold marks to one US dollar. And people were carrying wheelbarrows or gigantic sacks full of you know, like $100 gold marks, basically, or the equivalent, because it was so worthless. People sit down to drink a coffee, and it's 5,000 gold marks, which is absurd. And when they stand up to pay, it's 8,000 uh, gold marks. It was going up like mad, completely out of control. So they had to go to the gold standard. And when they went to the gold standard, they created a new currency. They realized that they're just broke as dog <laughs> Now this new currency is linked to the price of gold. They don't have any money to pass around, almost none. So anyway, linking to the gold standard is only useful, really, I think, if you're dealing with certain specific types of economic problems. And I, we're not in the United States, so I don't know why he would advocate for that. That's interesting. Additionally, recommends eliminating full employment from the central banking system's mandate instead of focusing solely on targeting inflation. I'm just trying to think about this. Eliminating full employment from the central banking system's mandate instead focusing solely on targeting inflation. Okay. Well, we don't really need to target inflation at the moment because inflation is at a good rate, a very good rate right now. It also recommends simplifying individual income taxes to just two brackets, one 15% and the other 30 with the latter applying to income above the social security wage base to ensure the combined income and payroll structure acts as a nearly flat tax on wage income beyond the standard deduction. Okay, uh, we should definitely simplify our tax system, absolutely, 100%, but the tax brackets should be 15% and 90%, not 30%. That's absurd. Anyway, yeah, most of this stuff isn't even legal, like rolling back protections for the LGBT community and stuff like that's illegal. You can't do that stuff. By the way, flat tax always disproportionately hurts the poor because again, the rich person is buying that same loaf of bread that the poor person is buying. They're spending as much money as the poor person is. They're just keeping more of it. That means the money doesn't have velocity. Anyway, all right, yeah, tell me what you think. I th this is just insane. Absolutely insane. But I don't worry about us 
implementing all of this. I worry about us implementing some of it. Hi, Owen. My name's Jake from Washington State. I have an idea for a policy proposal. I'm curious as to what you think of. Basically, uh, companies would not be allowed to pay their lowest paid worker any less than 5% of what their executives are making. And um, the same would extend at a lesser percentage to uh, independent contractors. I think that would be a great way to address income inequality in America where CEO compensation is routinely 200 plus times more than what their uh, lowest paid worker makes. Anyway, thanks so and take care, bye. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. I personally believe that we should live in a system where unions are baked right into the system. The moment that you have more than five employees or more than 10 or something, you have a union and they bargain against the owner to get the best deal, the best um, benefits for the person, for the workers. We should have that, first of all. And second, we should guarantee that workers don't make any less than, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 times the CEO. So if the CEO is making a million dollars a year, then the lowest paid employee is making 50000 a year or 100000 a year or something like that. So no matter what happens, if the CEO raises his pay, he has to raise the pay of everybody else also. And all of the profits are not going into his pocket. They're going into everybody's pocket. That would actually be extremely economically stimulative, too, because as they say, the millionaire is going to buy the same loaf of bread that the poor person is going to buy. But the other $999,997 that he has left over is going to sit in a bank somewhere. And that money doesn't have any velocity when it's sitting in a bank. And that hurts an economy. That's bad to have money hoarded away like that. You want money to be moving around as much as possible in the economy. So anyway, interesting idea. I appreciate the phone call. Billionaires are a failure of policy. Well, the economy is going to grow. I don't necessarily have a problem with billionaires existing. I have a problem with the fact that the top 1% owns, what, what is it? Uh, top 1% top of household holds 30% of the total wealth in the federal, according to the Federal Reserve. So 1% of the country holds 30% of the total, uh, the, I'm sorry, of the total wealth in the United States, supposedly. I'm not sure if that's accurate, but the point is they own a lot. I'm unhappy with the fact that the other 99% don't have more of that. It should be more evenly distributed. You know, I understand people are going to start businesses and they're going to get rich off of those businesses. Some people are. And that's how capitalism works. Welcome to capitalism. I get that. But there shouldn't be such a dramatic gap between them. Like that is completely insane. And it's unsustainable, as Bernie Sanders said, and it's bad for an economy. It's going to end badly unless it's fixed. As they say, this is late stage capitalism. This is what happens when a capitalist market starts to go completely off the rails. Uh, it's savable. I mean, we could continue to have a capitalist society and everything would be fine, but we can't do things like implement Project 2025's economic plans, for example, because that's just going to make things like a lot worse. It's going to lead to the downfall of the economic system that we're in. Yeah, hey, and Sarah from Mass. i uh, just seen uh, how hypocritical you are on that. Oh, boy, I've got a hater, apparently. When they're talking about migrants and everything um, and what they've been through. What about the Americans in Hawaii and all the kids that went missing and all the stuff that got burned out and how the government is trying to force the land away from them? And Okay, hold on. I am so lost. I'm sorry. Eric from Mass, is that what you said? Eric from Mass. I wouldn't stand for that either. What the hell is he going on about? I'm lost. Yeah, I'm really sorry about whatever you're talking about. Like, I have no clue what he's going on about. Aside from that, I, what do you mean my position on migrants? I want everybody to be supported. I want immigrants to be welcomed into this country and have uh, like a massive number of immigration judges to 
allow them in or to uh, process their cases faster or whatever. Give them a bed. New York City guarantees a bed. They're not going to be homeless. It'll be in a shelter, a big building with a cot in a room with a bunch of others, but they'll have a bed. You know, that's what I want to see. I don't know what the hell you're going on about with this whole Hawaii thing. Deal it. Because basically they're the ones that blew it up anyway. But I don't know what, bro, next time, tell me what you're talking about, okay? Really go into detail because I'm completely lost. I don't think anybody knows what what he's going on. Does anybody know what this guy's talking about? But uh, no, the government's great. The government isn't corrupt, you know. I never said that. Kiss ass, kiss ass. They're all uh, they're all working for us. Nobody's against us. They're all. I never said that. Against us, they're all trying to, you know, take care of Americans. Yep, yeah, sure. Trying to take care of Americans. I never said that. There is corruption in the government, and when that corruption appears, we have a responsibility as a democracy to prosecute that corruption. Donald Trump is one of. The, you know what? I'll take it a step further. Because I don't know the entire history of every U.S. president, I'm going to say top three corrupt presidents in the United States history. And he's facing accountability for that. Boom. See? Government employee, I guess you could call him, member of the government or whatever, got a bunch of other people involved in government who were also corrupt. Some of them are facing accountability for that. Yeah, I'm all for accountability. What are you talking about? The government does not always have our best interests at heart. I never said that. I want a system with checks and balances. I'm sorry, man, I am lost. Anyway, thank you, Eric from Mass. Please call back in and clarify for me. I want to know what the hell you're going on about right now.